Our next speaker is no stranger to the stage, David Flanagan, Executive Chair at Delta Lithium. We'll hand it straight over to you, David. Okay, thank you. All right. Don't everyone leave, please. <laughs> Remember who they are, everyone. They're the ones who missed out on the Delta Lithium story. So today, I'm going to tell you about Delta Lithium. And there's going to be a few things that I hope you remember. One of them is that we're, we're going to start a mine later this year. But, but probably the thing I want to kick off with is maybe you don't all realise that Western Australia doesn't just produce more lithium than anyone else in the whole world. I think contribution of the Pilbara guys, I think was the year before, maybe last year or thereabouts, we produced more lithium than the rest of the world added up together. That is massive. And it's one of the reasons why I just love the mining industry. And I love what we can do here in Western Australia. And the platform that Diggers and Dealers gives us to engage with the investor market is awesome. So I am just so grateful for the opportunity to be up here. Thank you very much, diggers and dealers. So Mount Ida and Yinathara, I'm going to talk about them today. You can go and get this and read it as you wish. We can mail one out to you all if you want. Right, this is the lithium corridor of power. This area here in the world, it is amazing. In a few short years, it's literally gone from nowhere to being the most important place in the world for lithium. We've got expertise in starting mines, getting them permitted. There's great regulation here. There's an investing market that's here. There's a, there's a great regulatory regime corporately. There's, a, there's a, an exchange that people trust. And here we are. We've got... We've got We've got basically right in the middle here, two and a half hours north of here, up near Menzies is where we're developing our first project, and Yinathara, 290 kilometres inland from Carnarvon. Now, there's a couple of things that are different about Mount Ida. Mount Ida produced about 300,000 ounces of gold at 18 grams per tonne over 18, 80 years. It's a gold mine. So when our company bought it, it had an active permit to mine gold. They mined gold on that tenement 10 years ago. And it turned out that in the drilling, they hit lithium in spodumene, in a pegmatite. And Red Dirt bought it, and we've now drilled it out, and we, we lodged our mining proposal to turn that into a, a lithium mine in March. We're expecting to get that approval to start mining that operation there on site in the, in the um, Q4. And then we're going to basically start with a DSO operation, and then we're going to build a concentrator on site on the mining licence, and then export that through Geraldton. So Mount Ida, this is one of the first five reasons you need to talk to your mum and dad about this. They need to know about it. Your kids need to know. It's awesome. To start mining next quarter, and then shipping in the second half of next year. That's the plan, Mount Ida. Um, in here, over the course of the last 18 months when we bought this project, the company's completed over 1,000 holes, um, 200,000 metres of drilling. We first reported an initial resource which was predominantly uh, inferred. We've now drilled that all out, some nice big fat widths. We've done an internal scoping study. Um, we'll report a public scoping study on that once we've got it all converted into indicated, and we'll, we'll report a revised resource on this project at the end of September. Okay, so with respect to executions on this, the board's already freed up the first $25 million worth of cash to go in here um, to build the camp, to build the bypass road, to put the water infrastructure in, um, and to do the initial mining and prep for ore mining. Um, number two is Yinathara. It's big and it's very good. <laughs> I was told to dumb it down for some of you guys. This is about 290 k's inland from Carnarvon. And as a geologist, like I am excitable, but when I get in here, I get very, very excited. Um, what happened here is in the Gascoigne, there's a suite of rocks where there's all sorts of mineralisation. 
um, over, the, over the last 20 years, there was 34 holes drilled in the whole area targeting lithium mineralisation. On our tenements, 17 of those holes intersected plus 0.5% lithium. We acquired this project in August last year, and since then we've drilled 285 holes for 67,000 metres. We've started our baseline data for the environmental permitting. We've done multiple heritage surveys. We've explored for water, and we've started to map what we now understand to be the prospective zones, and we are preparing ourselves for a very, very busy 2024. Now, Melinda is the only place we've drilled here to date, and it's just awesome. There's, there's two beautiful parallel pegmatites, these, these two here, which collectively are, are two miles long. I'll show you the sections in a minute. There are multiple widths in, in beautiful intercepts. This thing here, is, this one is 1.7 kilometres long, and it's open at depth. M36, about the same, open at depth. And it, look, it's just been sitting there, waiting to be drilled. Now, you know, Kathleen Valley and Pilgrim Gora, um, I think when those guys released their first resources, they were about 30 million tonnes. And now look at them. They started off with about 30 million tonnes, and now look at them. They're, they're basically talked about all over the world. They're massive, so you, you never know what this might be. And this is, the, this is the first section. So this is section one through here. Right, and to give you an idea, this little bar down the bottom is 150 metres. So these things are, are basically about three, 400 metres down dip. Um, there's another one. This is, this is 500 metres from the other section. This is M1, the one that we were raving about before. Nice big flat slab, just sort of punching straight into the screen. Uh, and there it is again. Now, that there's mineralisation, we think, in here that we've missed with the drilling that went down plunge, but this is another 500 metres on for that last section. It's, so this is Yinathara. We haven't even been on the ground there for 12 months. Um, we haven't published a resource on this. We haven't published a resource target on this, but we're quite comfortable, comfortable to say it's, it's substantial and it, it well and truly justifies infill drilling, resource estimation and a scoping study by the end of next year. Um, here's some of the core for those of you who want to know about geology. Um, spodumene. All sorts of different crystal sizes, just spodumene. Beautiful. Um, in there, we've recently picked up another prospect, also at Yinathara. It's ours. We own all this 100%. Um, this one's called Jamison, this little area in here. Um, there's some wonderful plugs of pegmatite in there, outcropping. That one in here, the nicest one there, we've got rock chips up to 4% lithium at surface, around about 50 metres wide. You know, at Mount Ida, the initial resource there after about eight months of drilling was 12.7 million tonnes in nice big coherent slabs from one outcropping pegmatite. In here, we've got more than 100 outcropping pegmatites. And we've, only, we've got 575 square kilometres and we've only drilled one area that's two kilometres by two kilometres. It, I just can't wait to drill more holes in here. And Jamison is one of my favourite places. And, and there's me up the top there holding a couple of rocks, showing you why I'm so excited. <laughs> now, we've got a team that just loves digging holes. <laughs> Fair Dinkum, on the way here, some of them just drove and stopped in the car park with a shovel just to dig a hole. <laughs> What, you don't do that? <laughs> they are absolutely fantastic. This is, this is some of them. Um, and in a market where it's just so hard to get great people, we are just so lucky to have a team where there's so many people who have dealt with the challenges of starting a mine before. Because starting a mine can be hard. <laughs> I'm, I feel like I'm in the tornado of starting a mine right now, and I'm just waiting to find the little quiet bit inside the storm, but I don't think they exist. It's, it's really busy. Our team are all working so hard, and I'm just so grateful to have them. So we started off with Mount Ida. 
then Yinathera, then the team. What are the other reasons why you should take a very good look at us? Companies that are so busy, like our, our peak spend this year has been about $300,000 a day on drilling and about $7 million a month. That's probably running about $3.5 million a month at the moment while we're doing all of our estimation and scoping studies. But that, a company that does that sort of work and is in pursuit of starting a mine and all the other studies, there's lots of news. So between now and Christmas, we've basically got off-take agreements, scoping studies, our mining approval. Um, we've got all sorts of drilling. We'll be doing stuff with building camps, awarding contractors to mining, mining contractors. There's just so much going on there. So if you think that, if you want to invest in a, in a company that's sitting there not spending their money, not having a red hot crack, that's not us. We are giving it absolutely everything we've got. And then next year, if we get our mining proposal by the end of this year, as we're pretty much certain we will, we'll be digging a hole and we'll be shipping stuff next year. Hopefully making really good money. And not to mention that because we're in an area on a granted mining licence that was mined for gold, it's safe to say that we would expect to gain some sort of credit through the sale of some of our, our gold that gets liberated while we're mining our lithium. And the gold does not contaminate the lithium. And it's the nearest gold processing plant is a brand new $300 million plant and mine built by Oran about 12 kilometres from our lithium project. So there's, there's precedence for selling gold ores into those plants, there's precedence for toll processing, and there's another plant 90 kilometres away. And keeping in mind, this was mined at plus 18 grams per tonne for 80 years, so we would expect that to get some good grade out of here. Lots of news on Yinathara, lots and lots of news on scoping studies up there as we move that project and, and prove to the market how good and how great it is. So the, the, the fifth reason, independent verification. Well, I say we're good. Just because I say we're good, you're going to say, yeah, but you'd say that, right? We've got all these other people who work with us, and they all say that we're pretty good too. So you, you'll know some of them. They're all working very hard for us. But on top of that, we've also got Itamitsu, a global, like a, like a major player in the energy space and they have just been so good to deal with. They've got a joint venture with Toyota on all sorts of stuff with batteries. They do all sorts of things in downstream processing. And they have so much chemical manufacturing capability. They did their DD and they chose us to be the... And it turns out that globally, historically, that's one of the biggest investments by a traditional energy company into a critical minerals company like us. We've got Hancock Prospecting. You know that they've been buying our stock on market. You know that Minres have been buying our stock on market. We've got Waratah Capital, one of the best investors in the lithium market. They own about 11% of our company. Okay, and there's, there's many more. And we're also in the corridor of power, the lithium corridor of power. So if you've got a resource and a reserve and you're in this project, you're clearly credible because you've got wonderful neighbours. Mount Ida, Yinathara, our team, the catalysts, the verification, they're all reasons to take a very good look at us. The market is going to be volatile, it's going to bounce around. I think it's going to bounce up. The lithium market's going to bounce up and I'm very, very excited to be here. So thank you very much everyone for the opportunity to come and present here. And thanks to those people who stayed and didn't leave and took pictures of those who did. Thank you very much. Thanks, David.